A cut can be nasty. From the pocket, gets it out quickly, and this is Robinson. Whoa! Mm. It's cut out of the backfield to the five. What a move! Touchdown! It's Kringle. Takes off one time. Oh, that was ahead! But they could also be nasty. On the play, and Chubb is injured. Oh, boy. Well, this was the scene just a moment ago. As they brought the card out, Kyler Murray had to get on. The frustration, the heartbreak. I feel like at this point, everybody has heard of ACL injuries before, one way or another. I mean, it is one of the most common injuries in all of sports medicine, as like 175,000 ACL reconstructive surgeries happen every year, accounting for about $2 billion in the United States alone. There's a lot of research going on about how to get an athlete back onto the field after sustaining an ACL injury, as it is a season-ending injury for many people. However, as a graduate student studying biomechanics, I'm more interested in the why. I want to know what causes these ACL injuries to happen, and if we can even prevent them from occurring. In this video, just me talking to you right now, we're going to be talking about ACL injuries and how they particularly occur in a very common movement such as a sidestep cut and why. Why is this going on? You know, if we figure out the why, then we can start to dissect and understand how we're going to prevent it. The anterior cruciate ligament, otherwise known as the ACL, is located within the knee and is one of the most important ligaments for keeping the structure of the knee. You can find this ligament from the posterior femur connecting to the anterior tibia. So basically going from back to front. Now the ACL is a ligament and a ligament is just connective tissue that connects bone to bone together, right? So it's connecting the femur to the tibia right there in between the knee. Essentially the role of the ACL is twofold. First is it's trying to prevent this forward translation of the tibia. You don't want the tibia to go ahead of both the femur and the patella or the kneecap, right? The second, which is a little bit more important, the ACL is trying to prevent internal and external rotation of the knee from occurring. Now, generally when you think of the knee, it's just flexion extension. Those are the two that really occur within the knee. When you think about like the most common knee movements for us as humans for movement, right? Think about running, think about walking, squatting, right? It's just flexion extension. However, there is some internal and external rotation that can occur in the knee. It's more passive and not necessarily anything that we can control, but there is some, right? The ACL, what the ACL is trying to do is prevent it from being excessive because in this rotation, it's actually the tibia that is rotating underneath the femur. So this connection point between the ACL going from the femur to the tibia, it's not wanting to rotate that much because if it rotates too much, that's gonna put a lot of strain on that ACL ligament. So that's the main two functions of the ACL. Now, how does it get injured? Well, that one's simple. Garoppolo being rushed, oh, down he goes, first sack of the game. Lamar Houston, but Lamar, let's not, let's not go overboard on the celebration. Oh, I think he's and hurt. He, he should have been watching Steven Tellick. You just hate to see it because it's an incredible play by Lamar Houston. And then watch the celebration. Now, mind you, you're down 25 points. When you put your body into a position where either the tibia is shooting forward when the rest of the body isn't, or there is some sort of position where it's shooting up a lot of rotational force into the knee, that's gonna cause a lot of rotation and put a lot of load onto the ACL ligament. When there's a lot of load and a lot of excessive forces put onto this very small singular ligament, it's gonna tear as one of the young superstars of our game has been injured on back-to-back -back carries. Here he is going out of bounds, getting twisted as he's going out of bounds, and then looks like he grabs at his right knee. Which brings us to one of the more common movements for ACL injuries to occur, which is a cut. 
Now, there are a lot of different cuts. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna be looking at a sidestep 45 degree cut, something that you'd see very commonly in field sports such as like football, soccer, you know, lacrosse, field hockey, things of that nature, right? In a sidestep cut, the person plants their foot, bends their knee, and pushes off that leg to the opposite direction of the cutting leg. So cutting with the right leg will make you cut to the left direction. In looking at any movement and trying to understand it better, we need to break down each component of the movement. First is the deceleration phase. During this phase, a person decelerates from a sprinting speed to a more controlled speed to change directions on a dime. And finally is the push off or the takeoff phase where the person is pushing off that plant foot, extending that knee, accelerating forward into the newly desired direction. Now these are the components of the sidestep cut. And if we were to think about what phase of the cut would elicit the greatest risk of injury, probably say the stance phase, right? This is because during the stance phase, the body's getting ready for a quick change of direction. And with that plant foot being planted and not necessarily being able to move as much, a lot of that rotational force can go up through the leg and guess where? Into the knee. And what we talked about earlier with the ACL injury trying to prevent this knee rotation, a lot of that rotational force or that torque is gonna be put right in to the anterior cruciate ligament. Now, each sidestep cut is a little different depending on the trial or the participant, right? Previous biomechanics research can help us in finding certain positions that have a higher likelihood of eliciting load within the ACL during this stance phase. One of them is called knee valgus, which is a fairly controversial topic within ACL injury prevention research. However, it is worth noting still. Knee valgus is a position of the knee on that plant leg where the knee is more concaved inward. This creates an axial force to the lateral part of the knee as well as increasing the internal rotation of the tibia. Some believe that this knee valgus is actually the reason as to why women have a higher likelihood of sustaining an ACL injury than males because of this knee valgus, this concave of the knee based on their anatomy versus males. Besides knee valgus, there has been other previous biomechanical research that have shown other positions, other movements of different body parts that can elicit increase in ACL load within the knee, such as the trunk uh, and then the hips, as well as some other aspects of the knee. If you're curious, I've linked some references in the description for you to learn more about this. So if there's so many different factors that can occur and change for loading of the ACL ligament during a sidestep cut, why doesn't this ACL get ruptured every single time someone cuts or every other time that someone cuts? Well, there's one aspect that we haven't really talked about yet, and I really want to show you. This research says it all. Basically, this research reported that there is a difference in load distribution between a reactionary sidestep cut or an un unanticipated sidestep cut versus an anticipated, so a predetermined manifestation of a cut. Now this paper, along with a lot of other empirical research that has backed up this claim, suggests that the body is really smart. The body, your body, my body, very smart in trying to determine load distributions correctly throughout a movement, right? It doesn't want to get injured. You don't want to get injured. I don't want to get injured. So when there is a predetermined movement that can occur, I want you to cut right here to that spot. Your body already is doing simulations and understanding what is needed of your body to create a safe sidestep cut, right? However, when there's a time constraint involved, that system in your brain doesn't work as fast as you might want it to. In a reactionary unanticipated sidestep cut, a time constraint is normally around less than a second to occur. 
This can be seen from a deflection of the ball or a change in the opponent's position or movement that you're not necessarily expecting. When this occurs and your body is interpreting all of the visual surroundings, the external stimulus around you through your eyes and your senses, you have to incorporate that into your sensory motor system to spit out a correct and biomechanically favorable position so you don't have knee valgus and you don't have all this trunk tilt or hip movement that can elicit more load of the anterior cruciate ligament. However, if somebody's reaction time is down or lower, that could suggest that there's going to be a higher likelihood of them sustaining larger load within the ACL. Previous research has suggested that there is some correlation, some connection between you know, ACL injuries and other lower extremity injuries and reaction time. As these studies were baseline reaction time at the beginning of a season, mostly due to like um, concussion-based protocols, right? There's a lot that happens with reaction time pre-season screening for concussions, but then they use this for ACL uh, injuries and other lower extremity injuries. And what they found was that there was a higher likelihood of ACLs and other like, injuries within the lower extremity of the legs to occur for those who have a higher reaction time, those who don't have as good of a reaction time. Now, this didn't look at anything with load distributions or anything biomechanical. It suggests that there could be something biomechanically going on between the loading distribution of the ACL and reaction time. What can we do with this information? Well, this information can be essential for uh, helping reduce the injuries that can occur within sports. We can try to increase someone's reaction time, uh, not only through baseline simple or choice reaction time on a computer, but then also reaction time based on a surrounding. Their visual motor um, reaction time can be improved based on you know a more longitudinal study, a longer based study of trying to improve someone's reaction time and thus they will have better firing and better movement patterns for their desired movement such as a sidestep cut right when it's a reaction they will have a better system to fly through that sensory motor system connecting the brain back to the muscles and the movement now acl injury prevention is a long rabbit hole that i've gone down and i suggest that if you're interested and you're watching this video up to this point you should all honestly look a little bit more into it as well. If you don't necessarily want to do all the grunt work, I am going to be posting a couple more videos on some ACL research, uh, specifically looking at like the sex differences and some things about limb dominance that I find very interesting. And you know, if you're sticking around this line, I feel like you would be interested too. So make sure check it out. You know, look for it in the coming weeks. If not, if, you know, this video has been posted a couple months ago, probably already out. So it's going to be linked somewhere either right now within this video or already posted on my channel. So just check it out. Really appreciate it. And other than that, I mean, I got, I got not much else for you. I hope this was enlightening for you. And, you know, I'd like to hear your comments and have a discussion about this sort of topic uh, in the description. So or not in the description, in the comments, please. I don't think you can change my description for me. But that's all that I want to say. Appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.